Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a very interesting custom knife overview and review to share with you guys. This is the Nick Chuprin Ragnarok V1. Now, some information on that. What does the V1 mean? He explained to me, and we're going to go all around this knife. We're going to check it out. We're going to talk about it. Uh, he explained to me that he's got different versions of this knife that he's been making for quite a while. I think he said since 2016, if I remember correctly. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that. Sorry if I am. Um, but he's got different versions all the way up to V12, which apparently um, is a difference in blade shape, sometimes uh, mechanism, you know, different parts of the design. This one in particular is a V1. And they're actually going to be available for pre-order. If you're watching this on the exact day that I'm uploading it, which is Monday, they'll actually go up for pre-order tonight on his website, I think around 4 p.m. Not sure exactly what time zone, but I will link that page down in the description so that you guys can check this out either way. This is an all-in-house USA custom. So there are some CNC elements, but if you know what all of that means, then you'll understand that that means that this is an expensive knife. This is not like something that you can buy from Wee Knives off of Blade HQ. Absolutely not. This is small batch um, USA in-house custom. It's just him and his dad. Apparently, they've been making knives for something like 16 years. And I, I don't think I've ever actually handled something from Nick Chuprin. And uh, I am extremely impressed with this. This is a very nice knife, and I can't wait to go over everything with you guys. Thanks so much to it was actually Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast who sent this to me. Um, but um, you know, of course, Nick Chuprin by extension. Thank you so much uh, for letting me check this out and share it with everybody. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal Underscore Complex. Um, so I wanted to point this out. The steel on this one. I thought this was interesting. This is Nitro V. Now, that's a, a steel that a lot of, you know, we, we've been seeing that on like Civivi knives, right? But it's it's also a steel that we see very often on custom knives. And a lot of people have trouble getting around, you know, at a certain price point, materials equal total value, that sort of mindset, right? Which is not true, uh, but it is a tough mindset to get around. I can understand some people saying, oh, Nitro V, I wish it was something else. Apparently, he uses a different steel for every batch, but he's done Nitro V since the beginning because if I read his message correctly, he named Nitro V. Like, apparently gave Nitro V its name. So that's really interesting. That's a little bit of knife world history that I was not aware of, and I would venture to guess many of you were not aware of either. So these are Nitro V, but in the future, he said he's screwing around with Magna Cut and some other things. So if not this one, and you want to get your hands on something that's a bit more your flavor, um, then there will be different steels down the road. But yeah, a little bit of information there. Um, and Nick, if I get anything wrong, please feel free to drop down in the comments and correct me. <laughs> I would much rather people get the right information. So anyways, let's go ahead and get some specs. This is such a cool knife. Overall length is coming in. Oh yeah, he's out of New Hampshire, if I read his website correctly. Uh, the overall length is about seven and a half inches on the dot. Blade length is about 3.3, cutting edge three and an eighth. How about some size comparisons? Any custom scales can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. Up against the uh, AD10, and how about the AD20.5? Very similar in overall length to the AD20.5. This is a very friendly EDC size. Uh, and the handle profile and blade profile, and honestly, the entire profile of the knife really work for that. I will talk more about that here in a sec. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? and the Spyderco Para 3. More of a Para 3 sized knife. And then last but not least, how about the, little? where is it? <laughs> how do I lose a freaking like nuclear green knife? Okay, up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Hogue Deca. Again, similar in size to the Hogue Deca. How is the action? My goodness, my goodness, this action is very, very good. This is an incredibly controlled, look at that! That's such a nice controlled action. I don't like a guillotine action, right? Nothing against Grimsmo. I think their knives are beautiful, but that's a bit too fall shut for me. That is a lubed up guillotine with freaking superchargers and rocket boosters. That's a little bit too much for me. 
I like to have something that's controlled. You can see here that at a certain point, the blade is is constantly teetering. Look at that. It's just nuts, man. It just is asking for the slightest bit of help. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually seen a knife that is... I've had some very controlled action knives. This is one of those things where I'm really happy to um, have 60 frames per second here so we can capture. It is constantly teetering on needing just the slightest bit of help to go down. It's, still, it's actually still falling. It's still falling at the slowest possible pace. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the action is so controlled. It is phenomenal. I cannot, I cannot tell you guys how satisfying it is to be holding this and watching it do that and feeling it do that. Um, it's one of those things where it's one, um, it's one thing to digest this content through this rectangle and look at it and I can get the definition really, really good and I can give you 50 or 60 frames per second and all that, but you just can't quite get the whole thing until you handle it, right? That's the last element. And let me tell you, handling this is very nice. Uh, this is obviously made by somebody who knows what they are doing. And they've been doing this for a very long time because it, all of the boxes are checked. The detent, this is, this is the work of someone who has experienced so many crappy detents and <laughs> has decided how they want their flipper tab to feel, how they want the break of the detent to feel, how they want the overall deployment experience to feel. It's so apparent that this is... Uh, made by somebody who has dialed in their process so well. Um, it's just very satisfying. The angle and leverage that you get here is great, and they've also knocked the corners down. There are no sharp edges, right? None of this knife feels unfinished. It all feels very, very finished, and it also feels like the final product of like many, many, many runs over a long period of time, which is exactly what it is, right? The action is wonderful. The cutouts for Lock bar disengagement and on the show side scale, that's all beautiful, right? It's not cut any lower, but man, there's plenty of room to get in there. No double clutch. Just the exactly what you want to feel on a flipper like this. If you're going to pay this much money for a knife like this, this has exactly the action that you want it to have. That's going to be the first thing that we judge these expensive USA made small shop, you know, Knives on. That's the first thing we're going to judge it on is the action. And man, the action is awesome. So if that's all you were worried about, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you don't need to watch the rest because let me tell you, I'll, I'll give you a preview of the rest of the, the review. I'm going to say a lot of nice things about this. This is a really, really good knife. So anyways, action, superb, A plus, S tier, very, very good. Um, let's, um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the spider Pair 3. This is another area where this knife shines. It's actually... It's actually a size that is a joy to carry, right? Without feeling dainty or small or, you know, too delicate to be worthy of the price tag, right? No, it's about the same thickness as the pair of three, perhaps a hair thicker, maybe a hair thicker. Not even, no. No, it's just my eyes maybe getting thrown off. Let's do length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Lengthwise, it's about the same overall length as the Para 3. Heightwise, not quite as tall, even including that flipper tab. Then we're near the size of the PM2. Just a really good size. How about weight? So we are looking at some beautiful titanium scales. These are solid titanium. They didn't mill them out. I I kind of like the kind of like the weight on this. It's a little bit heavier than what you might expect for a knife of this size, but it feels good. It's kind of that inexplicable, you know, weight equals quality feeling, even though we we know as, as knife people that that's not true, but it's here and you can feel it and it feels nice. Look at this pattern on the tie. God, and that pivot is so awesome. Oh my gosh. My favorite detail, I think, is how we have shadow box the tie with the tie underneath. And it's all the same tie. They've just milled this line out so perfectly that it looks, I mean, look at the chamfering. There's so many bevels, right? Bevel, and then there's a little bit of flat, and there's another bevel, and then it's flat right here. It just looks nice. And then with this sort of sunburst or starburst pattern um, that all uh, culminates at the pivot, which is almost like the sun, but a gear, it's like a gear sun. I, like, I, I love it. I love the whole look of this. It's really great. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and weigh it. So the weight on this guy, the Ragnarok, once again, a V1. I'm going to show you guys a card here in a second. Honestly, not even that heavy. No, four, I thought this was going to be closer to five. It's 4.3 ounces. I'm just, I just don't know how to judge weight. 
4.3 ounces. I think we have a little bit, a little bit of weight in the, boy, you know what though? It's pretty balanced. Wow. This whole knife is just throwing me off, man. This is, <laughs> this is such a nice knife. <laughs> let's go ahead and do a, uh, let's do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We have some big um, heads here. I think they they got to be at least T10. At least. Boy, that's even bigger. Oh, you're pushing all the right buttons here. This is what I like to see. I bet that, that there's a T15. Oh, it is. Oh, I love that. I love that. Is the body screw also? The body screw is going to be a little bit smaller. The body, maybe the body screw is going to be a T10. Let's try. Unless I just didn't quite quite get the head of that in there. But um, no, that's okay. So that's a T10. So we have T10 body screws and a T15 pivot. And look at this. Look at this. Look at this. We have a hidden screw underneath. Of course, that also looks to be a fairly large size. But really, the look at this part is these screws are the only two frame screws. And they go through the backspacer and into the titanium on the other side without coming all the way through. So number one, we have a beautiful show side aesthetic. This is very, very nice. And number two, the number of fasteners to, to relieve this knife of itself. <laughs> to pull the knife apart. I don't know. That popped into my head and I was like, no, I have to say that. That's a ridiculous way to say that. The number of screws required to, uh, you know, take this knife apart, to take it down, it's so minimal. It's unbelievably minimal. I love this. We have huge screws. Very easy maintenance. Yeah, that's what you want with a knife like this. You definitely, you don't want to have too many screws. You don't want to be locked out of it. Yeah, this is great. I love it. Okay. Blade stock thickness. Let's do that here real quick. Um, blade stock thickness. Why are you not turning on? There we go. Blade stock thickness is 150 thousandths. It's about what I expect. It's a little bit on the thicker side for a knife like this, but I don't care. I like the, I like this. This, this has like a nice durable weight and robustness to it without being this huge honking crazy overbuilt thing that just, it's just too big to cut and to carry. No, very nice. God, so good. Okay, um, we've done that. We've weighed it. We've done the hardware. So let's let's talk about the knife itself. So ergonomically, wow, this is gorgeous. And it's it's not that there's anything different being done here with it. Like we have uh, lines that are, you know, they're knife lines, right? I mean, there's a reason that we see so many knives with similar lines is because the lines work, right? But the personality here, the Nick Chupriness, is in the detail and the execution, right? So these ergonomic lines work very well. It's a very ergonomic knife and the edges, he has made sure there's not a sharp edge on this knife except for obviously the cutting edge, right? Sorry to those of you who are looking for an easy joke. Uh -uh. You're going to have to jump a little higher for that fruit. Um, but yeah, all the edges are very nicely knocked down. So we don't have any unnecessary pokiness anywhere. When you squeeze this knife, you're just holding it, right? Kind of normal. Either way, Everything is very, very nice to the touch. Everything just feels so polished and so well paid attention to. I can't stand it when edges feel like they got it off the machine and they're like, yeah, you know what? That, that 90 degree angle works, right? Let's put a shaving edge on that 90 degree angle and just leave it like that. Obviously, that's not what we have here. We don't have any sharp edges anywhere that they're not supposed to be. The pocket clip is simple, but it works very well, and it's exactly the style I like to see for a milled clip, right? It's got the edges knocked in here, and then we have the blue contrasting with uh, the uh, just like the, the tumbled raw titanium. Really, really nice. Really nice. And it matches with the clip, uh, matches with the um, frame perfectly. I wish that this screw was back. Um, and so we could move the clip up uh, just a little bit, but at least this wasn't done to accommodate for a lanyard hole because uh, who cares, right? The clip depth is still about medium and that's fine. You have a little bit sticking up out of your pocket. Look at this area here. Look at this bevel, bevel, flat, bevel, flat, bevel, bevel, right? <laughs> this is the most interesting Simple backspacer design that I have ever seen. All of these different edges, right? The different 
blues and 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 titaniums and the sh- I mean the light reflecting on all of these different surfaces, these different angles of surfaces. It's so nice looking. These little details really just blow me away. God, it's so nice. I love that. I don't I don't like it when when knives are like, yeah, I get it. You know, it's it's made they're they're small batch, they're made in the USA, they're expensive to make, right? It's way more expensive than the Chinese equivalent. It just it like it just is. Right. And there's a, you know, for people wondering like why would you why would you spend that much money when you could go buy the Chinese equivalent for way less? It's because this is made in the United States by, in this case, two gentlemen who have been making knives for a long time and don't have the ability to mass produce things. It's because there is such an amazing attention to detail. It's because it's it's not as easy to get. There's pride of exclusivity, pride of ownership, right? Pride in country of origin. And if you still don't understand that, you don't have to because the market for this stuff is very, very healthy and will continue to exist with or without the permission or understanding of everybody else. And I'm not trying to be insulting, but there's a large number of people. And as my channel grows, that number gets larger and larger and larger. There's so many people who are just like, I don't get it. You don't have to. But this has existed for a very, very long time, right? I get much more excited about stuff like this then, you know, if we comes out with a new integral next month, cool, but it's not the same thing, right? This is way more impressive. What it takes to create this, to me, is way more impressive. And to many of you, not all of you, but many of you. But yeah, it's just really nice um, is the, that's what I'm trying to say there. Uh, I, I really like how we have the machining line still on the blade. Truth be told, while you're cutting, this actually will slow you down just a little bit. But I got to be real. I, I don't care. I You know, if it does or, you know, if it's like a trap for debris while you're cutting, I, I honestly don't care because I just think it looks awesome. It looks so good. And I like how this is kind of darker. And then we have this more you know, satin flat right here. We have the logo right there. We, of course, have a nice mirror edge on that or a nice polished edge on it. Looks like Levon's been using this a bit. That's fine. He didn't bother to wipe it off before he sent it to me. That's also fine. <laughs> um, a little harpoon notch back here. This is a Tanto. We have a straight edge. And then this uh, edge out here actually has some curvature to it. But everything is perfect. We don't have a wider bevel down here. And then uh, I'm going to imagine this is sharpened by hand. And it's really impressive because look how perfect that, that bevel is, right? We don't have the goofiness, the wonkiness, right, that you sometimes get with small shop custom makers, right? Not coming down on anybody for that, but this is, again, the work of somebody who really knows exactly what they're doing. Um, pivot is the same on both sides. Really, really interesting. I'll give you guys another close-up look at that. That's just a lot of extra detail. I love the lip and ring around um, the outside of that. I love how, you know, all of these lines sort of culminate in the same spot and that blue to silver continues in there. I'm going to guess you obviously have different, maybe different um, milling patterns, maybe different anodizing pan- patterns. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure that that is absolutely the case. So you probably have, um, you know, many choices. Really, really nice. We already talked about the backspacer here. Already talked about the pocket clip. The pocket clip rests halfway on the frame and halfway on the frame lock. So while there is no over travel stop that I can see, the tension on the clip is more than enough to keep that um, to keep that frame lock from moving over and honestly just the general tension on the frame lock itself it takes a decent amount of force to move that over and i think it's the thickness and obviously how he's done the relief cut which is really interesting this is definitely more interesting than just like the typical u-shape right so it's nice um you can see the detent ball in there and you know what i want to look real quick There's something else in there that i'm seeing that i'm not understanding I didn't notice initially. Oh no, I'm I'm sorry. It's, there's, <laughs> there's nothing else weird going on in there. Um, but the detent ball, you can see the lock up here, right? Really good geometry. It do, It is looking like it's really early, but I can tell you it is completely solid with absolutely no movement and no, not a hint of lock stick. That is just about as perfect as you could possibly ask for when it comes to frame lock geometry. 
Um, really, really cool. And as far as I can tell here, now I didn't get this detail from him, but I was looking at this and I've concluded if there are bearings in there, then they are deep, deep underneath there. But it looks like phosphor bronze. It just feels a lot like bearings. Um, whatever we've got going on here, it looks like it would be impossible for debris to get inside of this system. And actually, this is going to be one of those things now that I'm 20 minutes into it. Um, I'm hoping that Nick actually clarifies down in, um, in the comments because I would actually like to know what the heck is going on here. But this looks great and feels great and it looks like it is impenetrable to um, dirt and debris. So really, really cool. You can see the total surface contact of the lock bar right there. While it's looking really early, you can see how much is actually contacting um, the tang of the blade. So that's really nice. Like I said, absolute lockup and security, no problem. Not a hint of lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. The most perfectly consistent feeling. Oh my gosh, it is absolutely perfect. And look at this, look at this, here we go. Oh, that's nice. Nice and clicky with absolutely perfect centering and no detent lash. This is a really nice USA custom knife. Um, these start at $740. Now, that's a lot of money, and I know I can hear all the gasps and the, oh, but I think people who know the actual, you know, the people who this is actually for, because the, these, these knives are not built for everybody. It's, it's just not the case. It's built for people who appreciate the small shop USA custom and the people who specifically can do it this well. This is 100% in the same tier as your brown knives, your Koenig knives, your Holt knives, right? We are above the Hinders and the Chris Reeves. We are above the, um, you know, the Les Georges. We're in another tier. And, um, you know, initially when I, I saw that price tag before it, uh, it came to me, I remember thinking that's a lot of money. It's going to be, uh, it's got to be pretty nice. Wow. Yeah. Pass with flying colors. And I mean, I, I don't, I'm, I don't mean I'm passing on the knife. I'm saying this, this knife gets an absolute pass. Um, now I think, I think people are going to be like, I want something better than Nitro V for that money. And that's fine because he, again, he works with other steels, right? So if not this batch, then you can get what you want. Um, but is it worth $740 to the people who specifically want this type of craftsmanship, this type of product and where it's made and how it's made is very, very important to them? Absolutely. To the people who are just trying to like maximize the, you know, the perceived value of materials, right? If you're, you're trying to maximize that for every dollar, well, no, go, just go buy a Chinese knife off of Blade HQ. Like we makes it like a thousand of them. Like th that's, that's what is for you. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But we can't sit and pretend that this should be the same price. Absolutely not. This costs an enormous amount of money and time to do, right? I had, a, I had a discussion with this guy who was like, well, his business costs and the cost of maintaining his machine. I'm not saying Nick Schuprin, but just anybody. Because I was saying, well, you're not factoring in anything else. You're just factoring in materials and, you know, the time it takes to make it. You know, that's not the total cost. So you got to factor in the cost of his business, right? The, what it takes to insure everything, uh, the cost to maintain and, um, you know, keep his, his equipment going. Because, listen, milling titanium is not easy on a machine, right? You have to factor all this in. He was like, well, that's not my problem. I, I'm the consumer. All I care about is the final. But, and I was like, well, <laughs> listen, without those costs factored in, you wouldn't have the product, right? So if you think that way, let me tell you, the best thing you can do is go buy something off of Blade HQ that costs whatever you think that it should cost, Right? But if you do understand what it costs to create this, if you really do, right, then I think you'll find the same value in this that I do. This is very, very good. I am so impressed with this knife, and I think it looks fantastic and feels fantastic. It feels like a knife that costs $740, right? It's got the X factor. I like it. You can check these out. If you're interested, you can pre-order these tonight. No. I don't get paid anything for doing this. I don't get to keep the knife. I just like it. It's going back to uh, Nick. Um, and, uh, you yeah, know, there's no affiliate in anything. I, I just like it. So check out the links if you want to. This is going to go in my uh, recommended knives playlist. It's also going to go in my favorite knives of all time playlist. Really enjoyed this. Where's my card? Please. Uh, 
That's the old one. Oh, man. Wow. Blast from the past. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Sorry, I might have spit on this a little bit, Nick. Try to wipe it off before it comes back to you. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.